Hello and welcome to Love and Lordship Live. I'm Greg Williams. Will you please pray for me as next Monday, July 4th, as we in the United States celebrate our Independence Day as a country, I will be sharing the Love and Lordship's first radio broadcast, The Authority of Love, based upon our book and this ministry on 99.1 FM WJMM Central Kentucky Christian Radio. It'll be five days a week, Monday through Friday, each weekday from 11 to 1115. Thanks for your prayers. And with that said, we want to continue with our series in the names of God. We're getting close to the end, although I'm going to be kind of sad when that happens because these have been very encouraging to me, and I, I pray that they have been to you as well. We begin, as always, with a scripture verse that glorifies his name. In, in Psalm 45, 17, David says, I will make your name known among all generations. Therefore, the peoples will praise you forever and ever. With that in mind, today's first name for God should give us tremendous encouragement. We find it in Isaiah 45, 21. In this chapter, as we know it, Isaiah is prophesying how God will, in the future, use even a pagan king, Cyrus, to accomplish his will. Think about that for a minute. He's already speaking about it prophetically that's going to happen, that a king that doesn't believe in him is going to actually do his bidding. Isaiah speaks of God's supreme power, and then he, God himself, declares through Isaiah that he alone is God, and at some point, every knee will bow and every tongue will proclaim allegiance to him, give him the honor that he alone is due. In the middle of this incredible declaration by God through Isaiah, there in verse 21, he calls himself El Sadiq, the righteous God. El, or Jehovah Sidkenu, is God our righteousness, El Sadiq, similar root word, of course, the righteous God. How does this come together? Well, I believe he does this because he wants to let Israel and all who will believe on him through Christ know that everything he does is righteous. There is no unholy, unloving, bad, evil, or unrighteousness in him, and no unrighteous, unloving, unholy act that he ever does. Even when we struggle with it, We've got to remember that's who he is. Even though he is righteous and we were created for relationship with him, our sin broke that relationship. And that's what's missing in a lot of lives in churches today, the recognition of sin. How can we ever fully get there if we don't recognize the sin that separates us? We look for it through the law, our fleshly desires, and through other created things, but can never find the fulfillment because we are in righteousness. Sin is seen to that. But for Christ, he is our righteousness. Christ is our El Sadiq, the righteous God, to all who believe on him. The righteous God in Christ became our sin and unrighteousness so that those who put their faith in him would become righteous. Look at 1 Corinthians 1.30 and 2 Corinthians 5.21. Remember, I have all these linked at loveandlordship.com in the articles. You can listen to the videos again or podcast or share them. Please do so. Again, how can we not praise him that even though we could never be righteous in and of ourselves in our feeble efforts because of sin, Christ has made it so for all who will believe in him as Savior and walk with him as Lord. He has justified us, justified, never sinned. That's how God sees me, is sanctifying us, daily shaping and molding us by faith through grace, just as he saved us and put us in a right relationship with God by making us righteous. And all of this by his grace, he is glorifying us from glory to glory as we live for his glory. Now, please don't get that wrong. The Romans did this. Oh, great. I can keep on sinning and get more grace and I'm still righteous. No, Paul said, God forbid. You continue in that. You become a slave to that. And that means you move away from God's righteousness. You no longer, you're a slave. To that. I don't think it's going to work well on judgment day when we go, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. But I chose sin to be my master. We got to take that seriously. Where are you in your standing with God? Are you still trying to stand on your own righteousness? Have you received all that Christ has done in making you righteous before God? You can be in relationship with the righteous God because you are righteous if you believe in Christ as Savior and Lord. Now, we've spent much, much time seeking out and looking at the names of God given through David in the Psalms and now through Isaiah. If you remember from recent devotions or or, or um, posts that we've done, podcasts and articles, 
Isaiah is written in two sections. The first part is mainly warning Judah of the coming disaster for their sins and rebellion against God. The second part is largely dealing with messianic prophecy. It is here that we find one of the last names of God in Isaiah. There are actually two names that we will look at. Both of these names are found in two separate uh, texts, one in Isaiah 49, 26, and the other in 60, verse 16. The being very relevant to proclaiming make the Messiah makes them very pertinent to us. The whole chapter, as we know it, of Isaiah 49 is about God's ultimate In verse 26, he proclaims that he is Jehovah Moshiach, or Yasha, God our Savior. These names are variants of Yeshua, all right, God who saves, and certainly point to Christ's coming and to our salvation through him. The new name found here is Jehovah Goel. We've talked about that one before, the first one. But it is God our Savior. Now he also says, I am Jehovah Goel, God our Redeemer. Again, pointing to Christ and helping us better understand that salvation includes redemption from sin, self, evil, death, and hell. In Isaiah 60, 16, he uses the very same names of proclaiming that ultimate salvation and victory that Christ will bring in the glorified Zion, the new heaven and new earth, where Christ has set all things right and we will reign with him forever. He is Jehovah Moshiach or Yasha, Yasha and Jehovah Goel, our Savior and our Redeemer. What an incredible and great God to come to us in Christ the Messiah as Jehovah Moshiach or Yasha and Jehovah Goel, Savior and Redeemer. He both saves us from our sins and redeems us back from all that self and sin had relegated us to, death and hell. In Galatians 3, 13, and 14, Christ is Jehovah Goel, God our Redeemer. Check it out at the link, lovingordship.com. And in Luke 2, 11, and John 4, 42, he is clearly proclaimed as Jehovah Moshiach, or Yasha, God our Savior. Praise the Lord for his salvation and redemption for all who put their faith, not just a mental ascent, but lived out faith. That's why James can say faith without works is dead. God gives it to you by grace, but then you have that grace to live it out. You put your faith in Christ. The question is, have you done so? With these two names in mind, we look at our final name today, our final name of God today, post, it's found in uh, Jeremiah 16, 19. And here we find a very reassuring name of God as you enter into that hope and into the unknown of each and every new day. In this chapter, as with many of the prophets of the Old Testament, Jeremiah is declaring the destruction and distresses that Israel in their wickedness and sin had invited on themselves. Same thing today. Christ has made it so we don't have to deal with that, but we often do, and we, we rationalize and do it, claiming we're saved by grace, and then wonder when we reap the consequences, why'd you let me down, God? And God said, I'm still right here. There is sufficient grace but I'm telling you, don't continue in that. You see, the, the issue is that God was simply being faithful to his word to show them the truth of their evil choices. After spending most of this chapter telling them that they would face all the consequences of their sins, Jeremiah closes with the encouraging prophetic word that God was and is their strength. He is Jehovah Maozi, God my fortress, Jehovah Maozi. God, my fortress, what incredible encouragement as we face life with all the hopes, dreams, difficulties, and unknowns. Jesus is our Jehovah Maotzi, God, my fortress, our fortress, who is always with us, will always protect us, and has saved us for eternity, even as we may face trials, temptations, and troubles each day. Jesus as our fortress means that he is our security, protection, strength, shield, rock, literally, that he encircles and encamps around us and keeps us from anything that can harm us. While we live in a fallen world and face the evil and sin of those around us and even of our own consequences from time to time, our own struggles and sin, Christ is faithful as our fortress to keep us secure in him. 
Check out Jude 1, 24 and 25 and Romans 8, 31 through 39. You will be blessed to know where you stand if you are a believer in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Now, I don't want to lead you astray. This does not mean that we will not face trials and struggles and sin and brokenness and disease and pain. It still happens. These are all part of the fallen world and fallen people. But it does mean that he will keep us secure in him and present us before God the Father as faultless and blameless. What a wonderful God he is and a great fortress. Jehovah Mosey, God my fortress. Are you sure and secure in Christ? Let us know at Love and Lordship if you have questions and would like to know more. God bless in Christ. And now let me wrap this up. Our three names. He is El Sadiq, the righteous God that none of us could approach apart from him becoming flesh and then becoming sin and unrighteousness so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ. He makes us righteous so we can be in that relationship. He is Jehovah Moshe Ek or Yasha and Jehovah Goel, God our Savior and Redeemer. And finally, in Christ, he is Jehovah Maosi, God my fortress, my protection. All of this made possible and a reality only in Christ. I got my action items again. You know the first two if you've watched it all. Read the scriptures in this article and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Write down what each of the names of God in this post mean to you. Number three, list at least one specific way that God has shown himself to you in one of the names in this post. And finally, number four, why is it so important that Christ, as the righteous God, became sin and unrighteousness to make us righteous? That's a powerful one if you'll spend a little time on that one. If you've got questions or need help, please contact us. Love and Lordship is a safe place. We don't charge anything. We'd love to engage with you and share with you. And if your group or organization would like to partner with us, we'd love to partner with you for a series if you're close by or online, or we can come and do a retreat or a conference or a seminar if you'd like that. Contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com. Love and Lordship, spell it all out together, loveandlordship at gmail.com. Or you can text or call me at 859 859- 229 Now, if I don't answer and don't recognize your number because all the junk that's out there, please leave a message. I will get back with you. Uh, email me, text me, message me on Facebook. Love to hear from you, engage with you. Please continue to pray. We're, we've fallen short of the goal, but that's okay. God will provide. We've got some more coming in. Thank you. And if you're moved, Uh, to understand that God is saying, this is a kingdom ministry uh, for my kingdom and glory, and I'd like you to support it. Will you be obedient to do that? And if not, keep praying for us. Thank you. And keep praying for God to show you where he wants you to give and share of what he's entrusted to you. Love and Lordship's vision is every life and relationship built on the love and Lordship of Jesus Christ. Our mission is making disciples who make disciples in the love and Lordship of Jesus Christ in every home, church, and beyond for his kingdom and glory. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ.